In an era when Western leaders have been the dominant force, enforcing rules that fit their ideologies and benefits, sanctioning those who do not conform to their rules, attempting to control the sovereignty and resources of other nations, particularly in Africa, and imposing the general belief that they are the greatest supporters of human rights. Some leaders from Africa have decided to challenge their authority and do what they want. They have risen up on several counts during summits and interviews with Western media to challenge Western powers on their ideologies, policies, and rules, seen through the disguise of Western powers who claim to be interested in helping the continent of Africa, but in reality are only trying to control and mold the continent into what they see fit. These leaders are not afraid to speak up and preserve their country's sovereignty, which Western leaders are attempting to dominate. So in this video, we'll look at several African leaders who do not entertain Western powers or their media. Senator Sam Nardi George Ignoring the powers of the West to place sanctions when things don't go their way, Senator Sam Nardi George, a member of the parliament in Ghana and sponsor of the anti-gay bill known as the Promotion of Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021, has taken a firm stance on the issue of homosexuality despite the pressure placed on the government of Ghana to make the bill favorable to the LGBTQ community following the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris's visit to the country. President Nana Akufo Addo had earlier stated during a press conference with the U.S. Vice President that the bill had been watered down, but Senator Sam in an interview announced that the bill remains rigid and that when he, Akufo Addo, says the bill has been watered down, he doesn't know what he is talking about. True to his word, the anti-gay bill, which was recently passed in Ghana, remained rigid and seeks to criminalize the promotion, advocacy, funding, and actions of homosexuality. The senator even went on to warn the U.S. not to interfere with preparations to bring the bill into law, declaring that if Washington imposes penalties on its legislators, we will also take action against your business interests in our country. Such boldness to speak up and take action for what one believes regardless of the repercussions is definitely a trait every African leader should emulate. Congo President Felix Tshisekedi Despite the fact that France has been sending aid to Congo, Congolese President Felix Tshisekedi has shown that he will not tolerate France looking down on the country, feeling mighty superior because of the so-called help they seem to be sending Africa. During a press conference held in Kinshasa between President Felix and Emmanuel Macron, President Felix called on France and the West to abandon their imperious attitude towards Africa, urging for an equitable partnership between the two nations. The president stated that France should look at them differently by respecting them and considering them as true partners and not always with a paternalistic look with the idea of always knowing what is necessary for us. He then said, wagging his fingers at President Macron, that Frank Afrique no longer exists. We must establish a policy of equals. This moment was really a tense one between the two leaders, but we must applaud President Felix for speaking his mind, regardless of whether Macron would be offended. Naledi Pandler Since the Ukraine-Russia war started, African leaders have been under pressure from the West to support Ukraine the West also supports. They have not just been pressured but also threatened with Finland, going on to say that they are monitoring African countries and that they would cut aid to African countries who support Russia. Despite this, however, most African leaders have chosen to maintain their stance, saying that they have a right to support whoever they want to or remain neutral as sovereign nations. One of such African leader is Foreign Affairs Minister, Naledi Pandor, who during a joint press conference with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, accused the West of sometimes taking a patronizing attitude toward Africa. She said, In terms of our interaction with some of our partners in Europe and elsewhere, there has been a sense of patronizing bullying toward you choose this or else. One thing I definitely dislike is being told either you choose this or else. When a minister speaks to me like that, I definitely will not be bullied in that way, nor will I expect any other African country worth its salt to agree to be treated. She then went on to say that it was important for all to respect different opinions held by different nations, stating that, we are after all, sovereign nations that are recognized as equal in terms of the UN Charter. Mali's President Asimi Gweda 
Amidst growing tension between Mali and her former colonial master France, President Assimi has shown that he will not curry to France for favor, and so when just days after the French government announced it was suspending aid to Mali, except for humanitarian needs, he announced a ban on aid groups that are funded by France. He said the decision was effective immediately and would apply not only to French non-governmental organizations, but also those receiving material or technical support from France. Less than a month after this, the French ambassador to Mali, Joel Mayer, was ordered to leave Mali due to the remarks made by French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian, who said Mali's military junta, which seized power last May, was out of control and illegitimate. Mali's minister of finance, Diop, said the ambassador was welcome to return if France changes its position on Mali, but stated that France calling into question the legitimacy of the Malian government is a line that neither ECOWS nor the UN has crossed. Indeed, President Assimi has shown that African countries can certainly do without the West. Namibia's President Hage Kengab In light of China's increased partnership in Africa, the West has been showing their dissatisfaction by supposedly warning African leaders about the dangers of evil China and Russia as if they are kids who do not know what they want. However, African leaders like President Hage Gangab have continuously ignored their so-called warnings and even lashed back at them. Earlier this year, in a meeting with the former president of the German parliament, Norbert Lammert, President Hage, in a not-so-diplomatic term, told the president that the concern other countries have about Chinese influence in Namibia is annoying when Lambert said he was concerned about the increase of Chinese influence in Namibia. He also added that Europeans feel that Africans are still children and can't deal with China, but that is not the case saying, if Chinese come and break our laws, we will deal with them. Norbert also queried why there was more Chinese in Namibia than Germans. In response, Hage asked him, what's your problem with that? Why does it become your problem? It looks like it's more a European problem than our problem. You feel sorry for us. We will handle our own country. Every time a Westerner comes, it's all about the Chinese. That meeting was truly sensational and proves yet again that African leaders now know their worth. EFF leader Julius Malama Unlike other African leaders who have been neutral in the Ukraine-Russia war, Julius Malama, leader of the economic freedom fighters, has been vocal on his support for Russia. He even went as far as pledging to supply weapons to Moscow. He says that South Africa's position on neutrality only applies to the conflict in Ukraine. Under Malama's leadership also, the EFF advocates for South Africa's withdrawal from the International Criminal Court, citing the ICC's issuance of an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin, alleging more crimes, as a reason for the EFS opposition to the court. His support is in direct opposition to what the West wants, but clearly Malama doesn't care what the West thinks. Kenya's President William Ruto If there is any African leader who clearly doesn't entertain Western powers, has been so vocal against their treatment of Africa, and defends the unity of the African nation, it's Kenya's President William Ruto. He has even been called the next Gaddafi of Africa. In several summits, President Ruto has slammed the West on several issues, such as how African leaders are summoned like schoolchildren by Western leaders during summits with them. He said the West have undermined the sovereignty of African leaders, and that this treatment by them is unacceptable, and from henceforth any engagement with them will be an engagement of equals. President Ruto has also joined the de-dollarization campaign questioning why the dollar has to be involved in trade between African nations. In a speech to the Djibouti parliament, he urged other African leaders to drop the use of the dollar and start trading in their own currencies. Kenya President Ruto is a true embodiment of African unity. Rwanda's President Paul Kagame Paul Kagame has distinguished himself as an African leader that should not be messed with by Western media. Several times he has shut down the West, all the way down on several matters blatantly calling out injustices against the motherland and reiterating in several words worthy of his position as a world leader, African lives matter. In one speech he called out the BBC's politics and the lies and hypocrisy 
of much of the discourse concerning the African continent in the Western media, expressing that the West often assumed an authoritative tone of what Africans should be and should do. Another time, the pan-Africanist president asked how is universal jurisdiction universal if it is only one way? In response to a French judge who sought to try Rwandans in France in a one-sided power play, and without recognizing crimes of French citizens committed in Rwanda during the country's genocide. President Kagam has also called out the manipulative policies to control African nations in the guise of trade agreements and development, giving concrete examples of Rwanda being punished by the United States simply for wanting to grow economically by way of its textile industry, which would leave it no longer dependent on the purchase of secondhand clothing exported from the U.S. President Paul is not one to mince his words, and he has truly proven that African leaders are no longer ignorant of the ways of the West, and if they do not change their ways, the continent would fully cut ties with them. Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni Recently, Uganda President Museveni signed into law the world's harshest anti-LGBTQ plus bill, which allows the death penalty for homosexual acts. As usual, this drew the condemnation of the world, most especially the West, which has been spreading propaganda to spread homosexuality everywhere, except the Middle East, which is very hypocritical of them. Following the passing of the anti-gay law in Uganda, the USA has threatened to pass sanctions on Uganda unless the law was repealed. However, the president stated that the signing of the bill is finished, no one will move us, and urged Ugandans to remain firm pointing out that the issue of homosexuality is a serious one that concerns the human race. Clearly, these African leaders have proven that they will not be bullied any longer by the West and will do what they feel is right for their nations regardless of threats by the West. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also remember to turn on the notification bell so as to get alerts of our newly posted videos.